Tom Hartman here on the news. You need to know this. After yesterday's landmark challenge to the Federal Defense of Marriage Act, the pro-equality crowd is hopeful that the Supreme Court will strike down that discriminatory law. During the oral arguments, the majority of the justices seemed ready to strike down DOMA's key provision, which denies same-sex couples the right to all the federal benefits of marriage. The liberal justices expressed obvious concerns over DOMA's impact on same-sex couples. In the usual swing vote, Justice Anthony Kennedy seemed to conclude that the law infringed on a state's exclusive right to define marriage. The court's most conservative justice, Anthony Scalia, expressed frustration at the president and the attorney general for refusing to defend the law. The most notable, notable moment of yesterday's argument came from Chief Justice John Roberts when he attempted to make the case that the gay lobby was too politically powerful to warrant constitutional protection. Roberts suggested that lawmakers are, quote, falling all over themselves, end quote, to legalize gay marriage, as if to imply the LGBT community doesn't meet the heightened scrutiny requirement to be considered a protected class. But the fact is, more than 30 states in our nation have laws on the books barring same-sex marriage. LGBT families still have a long fight ahead to achieve full equality. The Supreme Court is expected to issue their ruling on DOMA and Tuesday's Prop 8 case later this year. Let's hope they strike down both discriminatory laws and pave the way for same-sex couples to marry in every state in our nation. In screwed news, as corporations rake in record profits, they're paying half as much in corporate taxes as they did just a few decades ago. A recent analysis by the Washington Post found that in the 1960s and 1970s, federal corporations for major U.S. corporations represented 25 to 50 percent of worldwide profits. However, today, 22 of the 30 companies in the Dow Jones Industrial Average are benefiting from effective tax rates that are 10 points lower. Despite the Republican talking point that the United States has the highest corporate tax rate in the world, most of these major corporations utilize offshore tax havens to stash away huge profits. These corporations use, corp corporations use our roads, our waterways, our electric grids, and environmental resources to generate their historic profits yet we're letting them get away with paying virtually nothing for that privilege. It's time to end the tax breaks for companies that ship jobs and profits overseas. In the best of the rest of the news, next month the Senate will begin voting on gun control legislation, and advocates of stricter gun laws are out reminding legislators that it's time for real reform. Today, gun control groups are staging a National Day to Demand Action, which will include more than 140 public events in 29 different states throughout our country. Mayors Against Illegal Guns will be running a $12 million television ad campaign this week to target senators in 13 states who have yet to voice their support for new gun control regulations. The Washington Post reports that today, excuse me, President Obama held a press conference with mothers who support gun restrictions, and yesterday, Vice President Biden took part in a conference call with gun control activists. On that call, the Vice President said, I think we're on the verge of getting a serious, thorough, universal background check system in place, and it will save lives. It appears the gun lobby may finally be losing its grip on Congress, and we may be finally seeing some real gun reform, gun control reform. It's about time. Even before Republican austerity measures took effect, one out of six children in our nation were already impacted by unemployment. According to a new study from First Focus and the Urban Institute, at least 6.2 million children have at least one unemployed parent, and a staggering 12.1 million kids live in homes with a parent who is underemployed. In 2012, the average weekly unemployment benefit was only $299, $299 and the sequester cuts that amount by almost 10%. So families struggling to survive now find life even more difficult to afford. As the Think Progress blog points out, the effect of an unemployed parent can have long term consequences for children. These kids will likely have lower math scores and poorer attendance records, and they will be more likely to fall into poverty later in life. Children are our future, and that's more than a cliche. It's the truth. They are the people who will be running our country someday. There are many reasons we need to stop, to stop the Republican austerity, and the devastating effect it has on our children should be reason number one. And finally, video game lovers have a new reason to attend minor league baseball games in Pennsylvania. That's because the men's urinals at the Lehigh Valley Iron Pigs Coca-Cola Park will soon feature the world's only truly hands-free video game. 
Video screens mounted above the urinals in the park bathrooms challenge players to steer along a snowmobile course and try to hit cartoon penguins along the way. The game is aimed at increasing men's awareness of prostate health and features messages throughout the game reminding men to get a prostate exam. The new games will be available for use when the Iron Pig season starts next week. Team spokesman John Schaefer said they they bought the restroom entertainment from a UK company called Captive Media. He said they told us with certainty that it's not in any other sports venue in the world. Games are already in use in bars in the United Kingdom, but the Iron Pigs will be the first to offer pee-controlled video games in the U.S. The games will likely be a hit with men in the ballpark. It wouldn't be surprising to see them in more venues before long. Soon, men everywhere will have a new excuse for why they spent extra time in the bathroom. And that's the way it is today, Thursday, March 28, 2013. I'm Tom Hartman on the news.